in the end, it's uh, it's the experience, the experiential side where um, real transformation need to happen and can only happen because we are shaped by our life's experiences all the time, right? And if we experience traumatic experiences, we are shaped by that. If we experience um, wonderful, meaningful experiences for us, we are also changed by that. Uh, so with wave paths, we took that and we realized that if experience is the foundation for personal change, personal transformation, we can work and we need to work with what we call the masters of experience, the therapists, the artists, mm -hmm. uh, the architects, the designers, and unify that and provide experiences that, that are uh, healing and are changing. Boom, what's up everyone? Welcome to Simulation. I'm your host, Alan Sakyun. We are still at Consciousness Hacking's Awakened Future Summit. We are now gonna be speaking to Mendel Kaylin. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for coming on the show. You're welcome. Really appreciate Thank it. You. I'm very excited to talk to you. Mendel is the founder and CEO of Wave Paths. You can find them wavepaths.net. They merge immersive media with advances in intelligent technologies and psychedelic science to improve global well-being. All right. Who are you? What do you represent? <laughs> Where am I? Um, big question. I studied neuroscience with a real interest in psychedelic therapy, or more generally speaking, um, more essentially, an interest in mental health care and the question, what, how can we change people? How, how can we facilitate positive change? And looking at psychedelic therapy, I realized there's a really interesting new paradigm here that is emerging. So as a neuroscientist, I studied that and looking into the way psychedelic therapy is being practiced, I realized the important role that music is playing in that modality. So I studied the interaction between psychedelic therapy, or psychedelic, the psychedelic drug in psychedelic therapy and music uh, to understand what's going on. And um, yeah, that, that led me to publish several articles and eventually to found uh, WavePaths as well as a company afterwards. So that's where I am right now. And have you been in London the whole time doing this? Yeah, I actually moved to London to, to do that. From where? From Holland. From, from Holland. Holland. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. So then you started studying neuroscience in Holland or in the United Kingdom? I started uh, studying, actually started off as a biologist first, then I pivoted cool. to neuroscience uh, in Holland. And I did an internship, my final internship in my master's degree uh, in um, London for eight months. That's where I met Robin Card Harris and David Nutt. And um, that eventually led me to do an RA with them, a research assistantship, a PhD, and I stayed on as a postdoc for a while. And then I pivoted away from academia eventually as well. And then, so teach us about what the studies were initially mm -hmm. in neuroscience. Sure. So we, we basically did two things, I would say. One is looking at the interaction between the drug and the music on a neuronal level. So how do the psychedelic drug interact with the music? Um, what kind of changes in brain activity, brain connectivity, information exchange do we see when they are um, provided together? And how does that relate to these changes in emotionality or in mental imagery that people report in that interaction? Um, what are the brain mechanisms at play, so to speak? But I've always been working on um, these questions from different angles, different disciplines, if you wish. If you look at my bookshelf, you see a lot of psychotherapy books, for example. That's really where my kind of key interest is. So with these studies, we also looked at um, phenomenology, the, the richness of the experience in um, a patient population that uh, was receiving psilocybin um, to be treated for their depression. Uh -huh. And I designed a music playlist for that, and we yes. looked at how the music was experienced and how we may improve the way we work with music to improve the experience of the patients and thereby enhance the therapy outcomes for them as well. Yeah. Th this seems so synergistic with what East Forest is, oh, yeah, is yeah, yeah. doing with his newest album yeah. and also what Synthesis is doing with their center. Right, yeah. so in Holland, the, the retreat yeah. center. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. just like your research. Interesting, so how the neural architecture is impacted by both the use of psilocybin as well as music. Yeah, that's correct. Okay, yeah. and what were your findings? Hmm. We looked at uh, mental imagery in the first study, and we found that in the interaction between, in this case, LSD and music, mm. we saw an enhanced information flow from an area specialized in personal memories towards the visual cortex. Interesting. So you need to understand that Brains don't only specialize, uh, have not only regions that are specialized, but 
these are networks that interact with each other. Mm -hmm. And we found changes in the way that information is being exchanged between those regions and the degree to which that happened correlated with uh, the degree to which people reported more vivid mental images and or personal memories even. Mm -hmm. um, then we also looked at um, the different acoustic properties that make up music, right? Music is not mere sound, music is structured sound in time. It has tonalities, it has rhythm, it has all sorts of acoustic qualities that change in time. So we looked at these different acoustic properties and we found that under LSD we saw significant changes in um, uh, language areas, interestingly enough, enhanced to the timbre or the tone color in the music. And, and the degree to which it happened correlated with um, emotions associated with peak experience, so emotions of wonder and awe, for example. So that was quite interesting and made us, like uh, as typical for science, ask many more questions. Yes. Um, in the clinical study with, our, with the patient population, we found um, an interesting polarity, I would say. Like some people responded really well to the music and some not. And there are interesting truths to be found when looking at both stories. So one thing that we found, for example, is that um, in the experience of the music, some people described that music was able to carry them on this journey inside of themselves. They experienced enhanced emotionality and imagery. And when they were able to really surrender to that experience, um, they described it as a journey, as if they were transported on this, 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 this um, adventure of discovery, which is in essence uh, the discovery of aspects of oneself, right? It's a journey inside. Um, that also correlated with the attitude of openness to the music yes. and the degree to which people um, reported a sense of union between themselves and the music or a sense of harmony. Now that was on one side, on the other side you had people who described music as feeling very dissonant and out of tune with their inner experience. And these individuals didn't want the music to be there and were rejecting the music. Now people on, um, who reported this resonance with the music, these were also the individuals that uh, reported, the, um, showed the strongest improvements for weeks after, the strongest reduction in, in depression afterwards. People who didn't have that experience with the music, these were the individuals who didn't mm -hmm. um, show these improvements in their, in their mental health afterwards. So The more uh, resonant the experience yeah. is with them, the decrease in depression occurs. Yeah, yeah exactly. Now, there's a caveat there because it's a small study, just 20 patients we looked at. Yes. But when I delved into music therapy research, I came across something called the ISO principle. And this is a well-established um, concept in music therapy. The ISO principle means matching your emotional state um, with music. So ha having music convey a similar emotional state as what you are currently experiencing and using that as a, as a starting point for other therapeutic work with music. And um, so finding that convergence for me made me confident there's something at play here. Uh, and that's what we're currently expanding on as well. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, yes. so the there's also a a specific potentially music therapy that resonates most deeply with each individual mm. that then can be tuned to their life that can then help them get through some of the most difficult moments of their life. Yeah. And then to be mm. able to assist that music therapy with potentially psychedelics. Mm. Um, and see how people can transform through those experiences. Right. This is your research, this is what you care about. Right. Okay, and it's really interesting thinking about all the applications like you listed to take someone that may feel depressed and then have them feel like mm. they're transformed afterward and mm. that they uh, have these deep feelings of unity. You, I like how you explained um, the, the processing of, of especially something that to become more visual, a, a personal memory, right. things like this. Um, Okay, let's jump into your move to London to mm. pursue WavePaths. Mm, mm. Okay, so True. how long ago was this founded? What is WavePaths? Mm. It was founded about a year ago. Okay. And uh, the, the mission of WavePaths is to make transformative experiences with music and other immersive media more widely available. One outcome of the research and the psychedelic therapy research in general is um, if you look at how psychedelic therapy is currently practiced, I sometimes conceptualize it as a form of music therapy, but it's a drug enhanced form of music therapy. So then the question is, what is so different about the experience of music in that psychedelic state? And could we maybe access that without a drug as well? 
not not because we don't want psychedelic therapy to be there, but how can we help prepare people for these experiences? How can we help people integrate these experiences afterwards? And also, can we find um, a way of engaging with ourselves that not always um, demands us to take these psychedelic compounds? And I believe there's a real opportunity for music to fill that void, this thirst that people have to engage with their inner worlds in meaningful, constructive ways. Um, there's a lot more to say about music, but the major almost everyone has some relationship with music. It's ancient. Mm -hmm. Music is one of the most ancient uh, human inventions that is yes. there, one of the most ancient technologies we invented. Um, so we, we, music has come to play many different roles in our society. It can be a social glue, it can be an aid to relax, it can be entertaining, it can be fun, it can be beautiful. But something more profound can happen when you listen so deeply to music that in essence you are deeply listening to yourself. So we, mm. we can call this deep listening. And um, so this, this question that we are asking with wave paths is can we um, invite people to listen to music in such a way that uh, their relationship with music becomes so intimate that music can become their friend, a companion, a healer, a therapist that people have access to at any, mo uh, any moment in their lives. That is the, the essence of what we're trying to do. Um, and we are in essence working to develop a new approach to well-being mm -hmm. that um, ignites our innate capacity to heal through music and other intelligent technologies. So you mentioned the word transformation, mm -hmm. right, and depression. A uh, really important question there is what is transformation in essence, mm -hmm. like what are we talking about? Um, transformation doesn't mean per definition that if somebody is depressed that that will be transformed into some beautiful, um, wonderful peak experience. There may be some really painful emotions and memories that need to be processed first. Yes. Right? Um, often, if not always, healing involves um, reconnecting these parts of ourselves that we don't really wish to be connected with because they can be frightening or overwhelming or painful. But that's where the real healing happens. Yeah. So it's not that in psychotherapy and in wave pads we only play music that has these <laughs> wonderful yeah. uh, positive emotional soundscapes to it. Uh, sometimes the work needs to happen by actually allowing difficult emotions to surface. Yeah. 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 Okay, so I love I love the the music is such an ancient technology yeah. and the way that it can be fully actualized in its fullest potential to be a an, an a friend, a healer, mm -hmm. all of these words that he used to, to, uh, f with humans is so beautiful. And we've it seems like we're only still scratching the surface with music's potential, yeah, ambisonics, yeah. all this crazy right. stuff that's yeah, yeah. coming. Right. So. Okay, so drop us into what this is like right now, because it's kind of like the commercialized application of your research, or um, also the democratized application of your research. Right. So, That's so is. is so. Am I um, coming in physically to the Wave Paths Center? Am I able to just make a download and play at home? Yeah. How yeah. does it work? We're doing both. We're developing mobile technologies, mobile tools that allow this approach to be widely available. Um, but there's a real um, challenge with um, trying to encapsulate this process into an app. Uh, mm -hmm. For example, you not have control over the ritual, the attention that the process really deserves and needs That's for right. those effects to take place. Um, most people don't have a good enough sound system at home as well. Oh. Um, so all of these things we have much more control over when we have a physical space. On top of that, I believe that the current mental health crisis that we are witnessing won't be solved by another digital technology. It will be found, a solution will be found within human communities coming together in real lived experiences. Mm. So what we aim to do with our WavePad spaces is offer our technology, which is an adaptive generative music system. So it's music that is uh, generating music through a computational system adapted to um, where you are in this moment emotionally and with your therapeutic intentions. So the music meets you where you are. And this is based on what we just described with um, resonance. We try to enhance this sense of resonance with the music. How do uh, you know where the person is and how to tune the music? To yeah, yeah. Uh, manual input by, by the user at this, at this uh, situation. And on top of that, we work with some biosensors. So we combine both. Uh, to provide this achievement with the music. So yeah. do they wear EEG or what are they? No, what do uh, they do? We, we have a multimodal vision there. At this moment, what we did in our space, we work with a radar sensor, a radar sensor. Um, built in a wall. 
Uh, you don't even see it. Yes. Um, it emits high frequency sound and um, it's able to track movement in a micromillimeter range. And we train it to measure breathing and body movement. And then what it does wow. is in this, um, in this space, we, you mentioned ambisonics, we implement a sound system called um, an Eliza L Acoustics sound system. 22 speakers, eight rings on ears height, eight rings above you, and four speakers on the ceiling itself. Wow. Um, and the music is, is generated in response to your biophysiology and the spatialization of the music is informed by um, your, your, your breathing pattern, the depth of your breath, the frequency of your breath. So the space that free breathes with you with the music, and it's done in a subtle way, we don't want it to be gimmicky, but all of these are experiments in our effort to enhance this degree of resonance. And the immersive sound technology allows you to forget that you're in a space. So you, you, yes. you, you lie on a chair, you have an eye mask, and the only thing that's there is your mind and the music, and all the interactions between your mind and the music that occurs in there. So I'm in a chair, I have the eye mask on, mm. and you have a somewhat of an ambisonic system. It's a lot of speakers. Yes. As, and, and it's 360. It's not ambisonics, it's an Eliza. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but it's, the same, it's, it's a similar 3D technology. It's 3D technology with yeah. sound. And then you have this radar technology that's able to, at a millimeter? Micromillimeter. At a micromillimeter? Yeah. yeah. Wow, okay. <laughs> be, able, be able to body, body movement. sense my heart, my heart chest, yeah, your, moving, your breathing, my breathing. And your so breathing. then if my breathing is maybe shallowing or it's deepening, whichever, you're changing the music, yeah. adapting it to my breath yeah. and how I'm kind of replying to it. And you're aiming to make That's these correct. experiences as, as healing and transformative for people as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And right now they have to come in um, but there's also, is there also a visual? No, there's not, because there have Well, the there is, yeah, okay. that's a good question. So um, what I want to emphasize is that this experience, this introspective experience of the music with this technology is embedded within uh, a human relationship. And all of that is embedded within a ritual. So the current space that we have in London, uh, before you enter this music space, you enter what we call the light space. And it's literally a space to be, nothing that distracts you, you're just present in this in this world of color, basically. Um, and you meet a guide who is a trained psychotherapist. Mm -hmm. And you already are invited beforehand in a preparation email to reflect on your intention in that experience. Mm -hmm. And you have certain um, tools that allow you to, to um, figure out what's present, what's alive in you in this moment, and how you would, would want to work with that. And then you meet your psychotherapist guide in this light space, and you spend around 20 minutes um, exploring your intention. Then you go to the music space at the second room. Excellent. Um, the, the guide will do um, uh, an induction, a meditation that helps you to be and feel more safe and open to the music. Mm -hmm. Then you go on this journey alone and by yourself. Afterwards you return to the light space, you're, you are um, spending another 20 minutes or so with your guide integrating and processing the experience before Excellent. you then, then go yeah. home again. Oh wonderful, yeah, you have the, the whole, um, the pre and post. Yeah, well, yeah, well done as well. Okay, so in terms of the, um, the wave paths being able to get out as a digital download, yes, you said that it's difficult because how do you know about how the person feels and how do you make sure that they have the adequate sound system that's high quality? Yeah, yeah. So where are you guys at with taking it to the democratized? Yeah, level? we are we are kind of reconsidering our strategy with that a lot at the moment. Um, because from a business perspective, of course, this app could be an easy way to um, scale up our, our business relatively quickly. Um, also from a therapeutic standpoint, it could be a way to democratize this uh, experience more widely. Um, what we did for now is we are only releasing the app that we have right now to people who visited our space. <laughs> so it's almost like an initiation. You oh, have this cool. space experience, those guests get the app afterwards to continue their practice at home. Um, but we are considering to release a version of this app by the end of the year. That's what we're currently working on. And that app will also have these different contexts in which you can engage with the music. Uh, different types of meditations, different types of inductions, uh, guidelines, and ways to process the experience afterwards as well. You could potentially get quite good at targeting specific uh, sort of ailments, emotional mm. ailments, mm. 
yeah. That, yeah, that could be interesting. Yeah, that's that's the vision. We right now focus on well-being as a, as a broad construct, mm. and we mm -hmm. don't focus right now on severe mental health conditions. Yeah, yeah. Also, because we don't want to make any medical claims yes, when we yes. don't really have them. This is an experimental technology, right? Yes. But we have that ambition for sure. And we awesome. partner and we offer our technologies to institutions. For example, people doing psychedelic therapy research in Holland with MDMA at the moment. Excellent. They will have a prototype of our app to support their patients going through their um, therapy sessions treating severe PTSD with, with MDMA. Excellent. Excellent. So you are already doing the partnerships with MAPS and that type right. of... Yes. Okay, yeah, wonderful, correct. wonderful, wonderful. And then, okay, so let's go, let's go to the... Um, um, again, to what, what could potentially come from this. You're looking at all of the different styles of, of exploration with transformation of well-being. Mm. There's potential also work with some neurodegeneration mm. that could, could mm. you could offset maybe. There's also work with neuroaugmentation. You could go yeah. in and get a um, to potentially in, you, similar to what we're doing with East Forest here in the in the mornings. Yes. You yeah, come yeah. in, you get the um, awakening experience, and right, then you okay. go on the rest of the yeah yeah day. So, yeah. So what about on the augmenting side and also on the degeneration side? Have you thought? Of, have you had, had thoughts about that? Yeah, I have thought of, thoughts about that. I mean, yes, there are some really fascinating research out there that shows that certain aspects of sound can be useful for treating uh, Parkinson's symptoms, for example. Um, and dementia, people with um, dementia respond really powerful to music and it's becoming more and more recognized as a, as a tool to support these individuals. Um, and, and the list goes on. Um, I am, we are with WavePads not per definition interested in sound itself, but more in music. And that's because with music, mm. you have the psychological richness um, that is essential for psychotherapeutic work. So we're not per definition interested in um, sound therapy. We, we actually don't like that term, although some journalists started to <laughs> use it to describe what we do, because the healing doesn't happen in the sound. It happens in your engagement, your conscious engagement with the um, experience that is unfolding. It's a dynamic process. So we're very much inspired by um, psychotherapeutic concepts here, where it is, um, you don't lie there and have a passive experience of sound that totally. does some healing, although some of that may be true. Um, we believe that much more interesting and important work can be done in that richness of the of the, of the mind that you can work with in these in these experiences. Beautiful. It's mm. the dynamical interplay between the human and the music therapy that's exactly. actually occurring. Yeah, yeah. The, music, how, the way they're processing. We think of music as a language, but it's a nonverbal language. It conveys emotions and sensations and images, right? And it, it can do so without um, activating the intellect. In fact, it does so by bypassing the intellect, and that's why I believe it has such therapeutic potential. Yeah, that's that's where talk therapy can um, run against its limitations because you keep engaging with talking and analyzing. If 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 um, if you're not carefully uh, contextualizing it, your problems, and in the end, it's uh, it's the experience, the experiential side where um, real transformation need to happen and can only happen because we are shaped by our life's experiences all the time, right? And if we experience traumatic experiences, we are shaped by that. If we experience um, wonderful, meaningful experiences for us, we are also changed by that. Uh, so with wave paths, we took that and we realized that if experience is the foundation for personal change, personal transformation, we can work and we need to work with what we call the masters of experience, the therapists, the artists, Mm -hmm. uh, the architects, the designers, and unify that and provide experiences that, that are uh, healing and are changing. Is there a specific style of music that bypasses this gatekeeper and gets to this subconscious, to the unconscious? Is there something that specific that does it most effectively? Yeah, um, music is, um, our, our emotional response to music is really a combination of innate capacities in, in a tendencies to respond to sound and music in certain ways that are um, based on our evolutionary heritage. And I would argue to a much larger degree our upbringing, our, our culture, um, our what I call a, a musical personality that, that we, we acquired in time. So I may burst in tears by this song, but you may not feel anything, mm -hmm. right? So, but then at the same time, there are certain interesting commonalities there as well at play. But in, in this therapeutic work, that's why we believe that 
you need to meet the person where he or she is in this moment. And that includes taking into account the music personality of the individual. Mm -hmm. Not because you want to give the individual an experience that he or she likes. It's not about liking, it's not about pleasure. It's about finding ways to engage the individual. It's, it's working with the ego to some degree as well, mm -hmm. rather than trying to fight it. Interesting, so it's a, per, it's a personalized experience based on what, what both the ancestral lineage of that, of that human plus what they themselves have absorbed as stimuli throughout their mm. life mm. to gain that personal touch on what they find most profound in the music and then it's yeah. then the responsibility on the end of someone like wave paths to be able to figure out what that is for that that's individual. exactly it. yeah interesting yeah. so then so it potentially is some sort of a process maybe then through the democratization where there could be a feedback mechanism for you to learn about the person's individual oh that's exactly what we're doing yeah, yeah, yeah. that's exactly what we're doing so we just to build a bridge to our research, we had some clues about different categories of therapeutic functions of music, but it's only based on a very limited sample size. So rather than trying to um, mold people into these different categories, we allow people to score and rate their uh, musical experiences. So in time, we have a fully data-derived data bottom-up categorization of yes. these different experiences. And then in doing that, we can become more and more precise in actually prescribing music as a, as a medicine to uh, each individual. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yes, yes, very beautiful. Um, okay, I wanna do a couple other thoughts on the way here. Um, what is the, um, the percentage of time that you think that there's gonna be people that are experiencing wave paths without psychedelics versus with psychedelics as psychotherapy? Mm. Ooh, that's an interesting question. Um, it was founded with the idea to support psychedelic therapy. But then realizing the therapeutic potential of music and realizing that there are all of those people out there that don't have access to psychedelic therapy, we want to offer music as psychedelic therapy. Right? Music as a psychedelic experience, music as a mind-revealing experience. So what I hope is actually that all of that will happen, that people who are seeking psychedelic medicines either because they're suffering deeply from depression or PTC or you name it in a clinic or whether people uh, seek these for their own personal development that they have access to these tools to support them in uh, the best ways possible. But at the same time, there is, um, it's not all about the psychedelic drug experience, right? You have, the, apart from the preparation, you have homework to do afterwards. And like I mentioned earlier on, there is, I feel, when I speak with people, a real void there um, to be filled. Um, how can I work with what happened in this psychedelic experience? How can I continue to engage with that? And I think with the approach that we are developing, we are offering a very, um, very safe, effective, and engaging way to do that um, through music. In addition to that, I, I, I also think that psychedelic therapy won't be for everyone. And there could be other approaches that are um, also very powerful, but maybe not as um, um, and disruptive as a psychedelic experience can be. Uh, and music and, and our approach and other approaches could, could play a role in that as well. So I, my hope is really that, 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 that both, both will mm -hmm. happen in time. Yeah. And what's the ideal future where, is it ambisonics 360 degrees plus visual plus the feedback loop to the personalized taste and music and visuals? Is that kind of the ideal future? We will see, you know, what the data tells us. So right now we uh, run four different scientific research projects with our current space, with our approach, including a neuroscience study. And that's our, our, um, our intention, is to keep refining our approach fully empirically, keep challenging our assumptions, and then in time we will find something that, 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 that really works. Um, with the music and uh, the sound system, yes, that's definitely something we will keep replicating and keep exploring. Um, the role of light is something that we're actually just so sure about. It's, it's more of an experiment as well. We are researching the light art that we work with, for example. Optogenetics um, is a very interesting field, yeah. Optogenetics? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, neuromodulation through light, yeah. Right, but that happens with genetic modifications in animals, right, optogenetics. Like, uh, opt optogenetics is um, a method where you, um, to my view, um, genetically modify 
a gene, making it responsive to light, and then you, you flicker light to, um, to the nervous cell to make it fire or make a receptor um, change its shape or you, you, mm -hmm. you name it. And there's um, potentially some interplay with what the, you, with if if the, if you you know remove the mm. the eye cover and then you have the visual stimulation sure, as yeah, well sure. as the musical stimulation. Completely, yeah. completely apart from uh, genetic modifications, there's something in light, right? That is um, as music, um, we, something we respond to very, um, very powerfully, absolutely. And that's what we notice in our space. We have this this light space, and people respond to it really, yeah. really profoundly, and it's. Um, it's something, again, we don't really understand yet, but it's something we are experimenting be, as part of our larger mission to ask ourselves um, w how can we engage the senses, not only music, but also light and smell and touch, oh, those are social great. interactions to provide a unified framework to facilitate these transformative experiences. Oh, that's yeah. excellent. The hmm. lavender sprays. and that. Maybe. There's yeah. so many <laughs> yeah, cool things. Touch, the touch, the... Yeah as through the process as well that's great that's great and then also just all the testimonials all the people afterward that that t tell you how important it was that they went through your experience and what the transformation that they had was and being able to yeah maybe have some eeg or some sort of a way to have the biosignals captured before and after that right. type of thing mm -hmm. um this has been very interesting. Let's um, let's do a couple quick questions on the way out. Uh, do you think we're in a simulation? Do I think we're in a simulation? <laughs> My God, um, it's a field I haven't given. It's an idea I haven't given that much thought to. I know that our serious physicists will make an argument for it. Um, do I feel like I'm, I'm in a simulation? I don't, but it could be a very effective simulation. Um, but do I believe? We're in a simulation, I, I don't, no. But it's an ent entertaining and interesting philosophical question for sure. And then what do you think is the most beautiful thing in the world? What I think is the most beautiful thing in the world. Huh. Um, a few things come to mind. Nature or human beings being honest with each other and authentic with each other. Why do you say that? Because that's really beautiful and important and missing a lot in our society at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's where a lot of this, this thirst for these approaches comes from is um, rather than having created a society where technology is being used to remove suffering and um, bring us closer together, we have created some kind of mega machine that is there to track our data, tailor our advertisements to us, um, make us more um, efficient at work, um, replace ourselves at work more and more. And I think a lot of the fears in society are, are based on that um, lack of uh, increasing sense of disconnection from other people, from meaning, um, existential meaning, all of those things. So it's beautiful when people are able to find that and when you feel that then you're part of that. Yeah. That's well, well said, Michael. Thank you so much for joining us on the show and teaching us about all your work. <laughs> you're really very fascinating. Thank, thank you, you. Mendel. My thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Huge thank you to everyone for tuning in. We greatly appreciate it. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below on the episode. Uh, go and talk more to your friends, your family, your coworkers, people online on social media about this powerful process of music and the transform transformational potential that it has. Check out wavepaths.net. The link is in the bio below. Also the rest of Mendel's links. And go and support Consciousness Hacking. Their links are below. Support Simulation. Our links are below. The organizations, entrepreneurs, the artists around the world that you believe in. Support them. And go and build the future, everyone. Manifest your dreams into the world. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we will see you soon. Peace.